That's how the supporters of the opposition described their historic victory in yesterday's national election. Initial estimates during the late afternoon were already projecting the incumbent party would lose. The gap continued to widen, and by 8 p.m. there was no doubt. Thousands of people gathered in celebration in the streets of the capital and other major cities. At the defeated party's campaign headquarters, campaigners were unable to hide their disappointment in losing the election. Some even called the election a real tsunami. And this is just the beginning, said the supporters of the country's new leader this morning. All right, so I am back. I am back. What's up? I've been working kind of like on and off. Just had a lot um, kind of going on, so that's why you haven't seen too much content from me, um, at least in the last like week. <clears throat> um, essentially, what we are doing, no, I'm not going to do the funny. I'm not doing the funny this stream. So if you come in here expecting me to do the big funny, um, you will be disappointed. Um, we're actually going to be withdrawing our troops from uh, from Belarus. Probably even cutting them off from some aid. We're actually going to try to overthrow the, the regime in Belarus. It'd be interesting. Precisely invade Ukraine. Come on, man. It goes against every single... Let's play as Putin and do it. You don't have to support it. Yeah, but... I just wanted to, I've always wanted to do like an alternative Russia, you know, where they're not being authoritarian, you know. If you guys really want, actually, I could invade Belarus, that'd actually be okay. <laughs> Withdrawing, cutting off aid and overthrowing, making economic, man, we were just like flooding in with suggestions on what to do. Some people want me to invade Ukraine, the others want me to... Make an economic union. I'm the guy with the debt problem. I know that's a debt. I know that's a problem. I'm playing with God and Spy and have a nine thousand percent budget excess. It's your special. All right, we're gonna have him create my government. And first thing is first, we're gonna reduce corruption. That is going to be the first thing that we do. While we try to scrounge around for some money, we actually do have an excess. Belarus is on fun though, because they cannot do anything at all. Belarus is on hard at all. I've actually never tried Belarus. Would that actually be interesting if I were to do that in the next series um, once 2023 comes out? Would you guys want to see a Belarus series? Maybe Finland? Do y'all want to see a Western country? Do you want to see an African country? Do you want to see an a Asiatic country? Asian country? Maybe in Southeast Asia. Maybe I could do India. I'm kind of, I'm going between India. I could do Belarus. I could do Finland. Um, <clears throat> who else? Yeah, we could do a Middle Eastern country. I could be Iraq. I could be Iraq, I could be Saudi Arabia, maybe I can even be Jordan. Maybe Egypt, uh, Africa, maybe I could be Tanzania, I'm kind of between Tanzania, Kenya, um, possibly Sudan or South Sudan. Um, Finland, Swami, Swami. I could do a return to the Republic of Turkey since the elections are coming up. You won't be ending to anything to get rid of some of the manpower and police and put the excess money in other, other areas of policing. Well, yeah, that's actually what we're going to do. We're going to be going straight in. Um, as soon as our, our government is created, we are going to immediately start tackling corruption. That is going to be the first thing, first order of business. Don't be Jordan, it's a hellhole in this game. You really only need 700,000 police. Man, you have played Russia a lot, haven't you, buddy? Okay, so... <clears throat> 
We're going to go criminal investigation, internal affairs. We're going to fully fund the living shit out of internal affairs. That is going to be first order of business. As soon as we get internal affairs, that's actually going to reduce corruption. And then... Find a level of internet censorship, we could actually reduce it. We're gonna be extremely careful with how we kind of try to, to, to free Russia. We're gonna still kind of have a lot of control, but we're not going to, we're gonna have a lot of control. We're not going to, you know, try to um, get, we're gonna have a lot of control. We're still gonna have not exactly a dictatorship, but it's going to be an authoritative democracy. Because I've tried to democratize Russia before, at least the Masters of the World and early editions of Power and Revolution. I've tried to democratize them, and they just don't like it. A lot of these parties that you work with, they're not exactly the most inclined to democratize because they're just like, you're getting rid of our power, and then they're just going to throw you out of office. Oh, 15 viewers, well. Get rid of the political police, increase the army by 250,000 troops, and more. get a few more commandos, get rid of conscription, and the military will leave you alone. Yo, PG, I got that viewer count. I'm watching on two devices. <laughs> it's really easy now to democratize Russia. I haven't played Russia in a hot minute, so... Man, bro, like Jamaicans... Jamaica right there. He's just giving all these Russia Russia tips. He's just like, dang, you're not going to invade Russia. Okay, here you go. Bam, 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 bam. Like, <laughs> so maybe we can do a funny in Moldova, though. That'd be kind of funny, wouldn't it? Can we make a puppet state in Moldova without Romania coming after us? Maybe we can launch a special military operation against Lukashenko. That's what I did in Africa. Semi-democratic media and education I kept on the authoritarian side in longer terms without limits. What is my... What is my uh, term limits here as the head of state? I have no term limits. Okay, so they already have that implemented. 442 days to the next election. We have enough time to kind of like get everything, uh, get the balls rolling. And so let's check our military. So. So because this could actually save us some money. So national service is a mandatory requisitioning for a given period of time of young men old enough to serve in the armed forces of the country. The conscription is the most efficient method to levy a large army. On the other hand, the guard means a conscript soft and slow to deploy may present huge efficiency issues if compared to professional armies. He said, get rid of the political police, increase the army by 250,000 troops and a few more commandos. Get rid of conscription and the military will leave you alone. Because honestly, if we really needed to, because the general mobilization button works now, and we can actually levy a, a much larger army than conscripts would ever give me, um, we could actually go with, um, we could actually go um, in the direction of, uh, of kind of like levying a professional volunteer army. Ecological response. What is my energy production? And we need to get some projects on the way. Of course, we only have a one terawatt surplus. Of course, we do. Of course. Hey, yo. Come on. Come on. 
15. Messes up my GDP, but didn't give me extra troops. Well, it depends on the country because I've tried it. I've tested it on like the UK. I've tested it as the United States. I've tested it as Russia. I've tested it as China and as Japan. Like China, I was able to get up. I was about able to swell my army up to 17 million troops. Russia, I was able to swell up to like seven to eight million troops. Um, like the United States, I was able to swell it up to like 18 million troops. Um, even it even worked as Mexico, Canada, the United Kingdom. Like I, I tested this, the General Mobo on a lot of different countries and i was able to swell i mean i think even as pakistan i was able to get up to like eight million troops as pakistan india i was able to get like 19 million troops oh my god it's max sprint yo dude max what's up i haven't seen you in so long oh my god you've been telling me to make a video on your game and i totally oh my god i am so sorry bro <laughs> i've been I've been working and I'm not trying to give you excuses right now, but, uh, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and, uh, I, I have a lot of stuff that I've, that, that's been going on. And, um, um, so yeah, so, so I apologize that I have not made a preview on your game. Um, but I will go ahead and start getting that, uh, the ball rolling on that. Taxation. Let's go ahead and go over to here and let's look at the wealth tax. Wealth tax. We're gonna start really starting busting nuts of the of the Russian oligarchs, and of course they do not like it. You know what? I just realized. Why can't you do a series on India? Um, I didn't say I can't. I was saying like. I'd say I can't do a series on it. I was saying like, like I'll, um, like that. That's one of the options that I have. And I also need to remember that I also need to explain what G, uh, debt to GDP ratio is. So, because I'm gonna forget, I'm gonna go ahead and go through this explanation for one of my subscribers because I told him that I would do that in the Discord. By the way, if you have not joined the Power and Revolution Discord, go ahead and join that. It's a full of nearly 2,000 Power and Revolution players. So if you guys are interested in that, go ahead and join in the Discord. So essentially what um, GDP to debt ratio is, is that is your public debt as your GDP. So let me go ahead and pull this number up. So public debt as GDP is essentially your public debt. It's, your, it's how much debt you have, public debt, in relation to what your GDP is. So essentially the way to look at it is that I have a $1 trillion GDP. My GDP is $1 trillion. My debt is $200 billion. That means I have a 20% debt to GDP ratio. The United States has a, um, it's, it's, it's essentially a, a portion or a percentage of your debt that it's it's a it's a percentage of your GDP that is literally debt. So it's comparing your debt, the amount of debt that you have to your GDP. Now a healthy amount of debt that you can have, usually what you want to aim for, at least that I aim for, keep it under 60%, 50%. I'm not I'm not an economist here, so don't take my word as an economic as, a, as an economist, <laughs> PG the economist, what are you talking about? Um, essentially, what I try to aim for, especially whenever I can really get my economy under control, keep it under 70%, at least um, if you're experienced, as experienced as I am. Um, the United States right now, they have a, I think like 120, 130% debt to GDP ratio. So again, that means that so if I go over to the United States right now, the United States has $23.8 trillion in your GDP. That's how much they produce yearly. 
So if they, so then their debt, what is like thirty trillion dollars? That's a hundred and twenty-eight percent of their GDP. So their GDP twenty twenty-three point eight trillion dollars, and then their debt to GDP is one hundred and twenty-eight percent. If your economy grows faster than your debt, then you should be okay. Yes. So it. So the way to look at it is that if you're running a hundred percent. 110%, maybe even 120%, if your growth is really picking up, then you're kind of like, then you're kind of in a position, if you're able to grow your economy, you should be okay because you're kind of keeping it where that should. Sometimes you're even decreasing it because sometimes you're outgrowing your debt to GDP ratio. So if you're able to kind of keep a balance between spending your money and then um, continuing to grow your economy, then that's where you you should be okay. If you're not able to do that, then you need to keep it between 50 to 70%. Don't go above 100% because at that point, you're just spending too much money. Your deficit is probably 5% and you're just not, you're not understanding the correlation between a lot of the economic factors that are in the game. And if you don't know the economic factors, go ahead and check out my economic tutorial. If you have not checked out my economic tutorial, you are stupid. Become smart by listening to PG. I see Crab Rangoon has just jumped on Power and Revolution 2020 edition. PG, when are you playing Mr. President? Whenever I feel like it, god dang it. So anyway, who can I make a free trade agreement with that would actually be beneficial to me? I would love to make one with the European Union. I would love to make one with the United States, but they hate me for some reason. Um, Maybe Mexico, actually. Oh yeah, actually, let's ask, let's uh let's go to Mexico. Dang, they only have a negative one percent. Let's ask him for a small free trade agreement. Let's ask him for a reciprocal agreement. Did you actually help me to learn a bit about the economics? Now I'm pretty good at it. Before I was very bad. Wow. So you're so 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 I taught you, and now you want to make me feel bad. I challenge you to a game of chess, bro. I have no idea how to play chess. I play strategy games all the time, and the one strategy game I don't know how to play is chess. <laughs> Your Asian Economic Union. Dang, I took my idea. Should I leave the Shanghai Cooperation Organization? Should I go isolationist? Should I side with China or should I start getting better with the West? I'm really glad that you guys are able to actually learn from my tutorials. Like that is that is that is, that really means a lot that my tutorials have actually helped you guys understand the economy a lot more. You're not in it, juggle both. Okay, yeah. That's what I was thinking. I could just ch juggle both. I'd basically be the connection between Asia and and Europe and the West. PG complaining about Super Power 3 not getting updates while meanwhile chess players waiting for the next DLC from 3,000 years ago. <laughs> Maybe I should start seeking closer... Oh, yeah! Let me go ahead and start seeking closer relations with, uh, with uh, Japan. Let's sell him oil. Let's actually invite him over for a meeting. That's actually how we're going to do this. We can actually get a lot of growth off of Japan. And we'd actually be able to get a really beneficial connection with Japan. It at Lord, how are you? I still watch them too to keep me on track sometimes. 
Um, yeah, Crab Rangoon is going to be helping me on the next energy tutorial. And then if he wants to, we can continue to work together on uh, like an election tutorial, um, everything like that. See, I, that's what I love about this game, by the way, whenever like Crab Rangoon make, made it um, very, very, uh, oh yeah, like a Korea pipeline. Yo, let's go. Let's immediately try that. So we're going to get some better relations with Japan and then we're going to seek, we're going to seek a pipeline to South Korea. See, I love those eureka moments that you can have in this game where you're just sitting there and you're thinking about it and I'm like, I'm like, okay, look, I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing a country, I'm playing as Russia, I don't want to, I obviously don't want to invade Ukraine, I can't relinquish control of Crimea, unfortunately, I can actually make them independent if I wanted to, should I make them independent? South Korea and India can get you growth too, maybe even Indonesia, um... Yeah, I could think I could think about a uh, pipeline between uh, Russia, China, and Russia, Kazakhstan, China, and India. I could actually do that, but um, so it's a pretty expensive project that I will, I'll, I'll hold that off for a couple of years from now. Could I build a pipeline from here? Maybe I could actually try that. I need to seek closer relations with, yeah, I need to bump relations. So we're going to do a year of culture with Japan. So uh, I don't exactly need a connection through China, but if I really, really wanted to. We're going to start boosting oil production. And we're just going to we're just going to melt the ice caps up up north. Which, speaking of, um, some updates coming out of uh, Ukraine. So, essentially, what's going on is that uh, uh, the Chinese President Xi Jinping and then uh, the Russian President Vladimir Putin, apparently they're meeting on Monday. And they're going to be having a two-day meeting with each other, Monday through Wednesday. And, essentially, um, sources are saying that this uh, meeting will embark on a brand new era for Russia and China. Um, the United States says that they have no intelligence that the Chinese are going to be giving them weapons, but there is a chance that there it, there's a chance that China might start giving them weapons. Russia is kind of boring as a country, though. If you're not aggressive, China, India is more of a peaceful country in country in terms of gameplay, unless Pakistan attacks. Drone collided with the Russian jet for some reason. For some reason? What are you talking about? What for some reason? Yeah, and and as well, there was a uh, incident in the Black Sea about 30 miles off the coast of Sevastopol. Um, essentially what happened is that a Russian jet, not for some reason, this Russian jet, uh, there was an MQ-9, uh, there was an MQ-9 uh, US drone that was over here by Sevastopol. Um, essentially, it was just kind of going over here. It was probably looking at the Russian naval units in the area. And it was doing surveillance. That's what it was doing. It, like, even the United States admits that they were doing surveillance. Just like the Russians do surveillance against NATO countries, against all of their neighbors. The Russians do this all the time. And so for them to get mad at this, this is hypocritical on Russia's part. And essentially what happened is that a Russian jet, uh, t several Russian jets were flying alongside the MQ-9 and then dumping fuel on it. So they're flying by it and then dumping fuel just kind of like, and then just like at the last second, they would pull up right on top of the, the, the MQ-9 and dump fuel on it, probably trying to obscure its vision. The last time that it pulled up on him, this was from an Su-27 flanker. 
think it was a flanker. I think that's what, what it's called. I'm probably getting them confused. Um, anyway, it pulled up right at the last second, and then it would do this. They said they do did this like maybe like a dozen times or something like that. And the very last time that it did that, it clipped the wing in the back of the MQ-9 and clipped its propeller as well, and the MQ-9 crashed into the Black Sea. So this is actually a somewhat serious military incident between the United States and Russia. I like how the Chinese have a nuclear submarine off of the coast of Sevastopol. It seems like Russia, like Iraq, maybe for the funny ad Russian base in Iraq. Oh, yeah. You know, I always liked um, the weird geopolitical look that Iraq kind of has with Russia. Like, Iraq is like the perfect place for Russia to kind of expand its influence. Even though Syria obviously does have um, some sort of a significance, geopolitical significance, but they're 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 enveloped in a war and i actually think we're gonna um send some things over into we're actually gonna send some uh uh forces over there to try to kind of quell a lot of the the force a lot of the uh uh situation there god i cannot talk right now um azerbaijan tries to do anything against armenia i think we're gonna invade baku it's actually something. Should I invade Baku? Should I, is it, is it, do I need to launch a special military operation against Baku and then arrest anyone that says that I shouldn't be doing this special military operation? What are we actually going to do, though? So we're going to go over to Secret Service. This is a lot of setup. Should I do a second episode of this? This gets like 200 views or something like that. I think I'll do an, a second episode. Um, Taiwan, I don't care. Germany, I don't care. Spain, I don't care. Norway, I don't care. United Kingdom, I don't care. Um, Indonesia, I don't care. Iran, I don't care. Sweden, I don't care. France, I don't care. Canada, I don't care. And Egypt, I don't care. And then actually... How many do I have? 207. 50. No priority goals. We are going to industrial spying, political spying. Are you kidding me? Taiwan, Germany. Spain, Norway, Netherlands, Indonesia, Sweden, France, Canada. We're going to confirm that, apparently, since it's being stupid. Bro, everything else is too easy to invade. Ukraine and China are the most difficult, but China has nukes. Update of my debt, 5,000% down from 28,000%. My god, wait, what? My, bro, what's, what's your... Ugh. Is that where your DD GDP to debt ratio is? Okay, so Egypt, I don't care. Let's go back to Japan since the game wants to be stupid. So Japan, 50. Uh, 50. Uh, industrial spying and political spying. Thank you. Let's confirm that again, since again, the game wants to be stupid. United Kingdom, political spying and industrial spying. United States, political spying, industrial spying. And... Do, 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 do. Iran, political, industrial, we're actually going to do industrial sabotage, cyber attack preparation, and demolition of strategical objectives. 
Ukraine, political spying. Should we go after the Donbass group? Maybe we can get... Should I should I should I get a better political group in Ukraine or should I honestly just leave Ukraine alone? After everything that happened in 2014. So essentially what I'm thinking what I'm thinking about this and the reason this is kind of like the lore behind this uh this gameplay is essentially so maybe like the Russians were building up on the border of Ukraine. Everyone was like, hey, those are our brothers. We don't want to go to war with them. Everyone knew they were going to go to war. And so Putin got ousted. Not really <clears throat> not really going into like details or anything like that, because obviously I don't have those details because I'm making this stuff up. My source says that I made it up. Um, but essentially what we could do is, I mean, we could still you know, try to seek friendlier relations. However, what we're doing is that essentially is we're kind of like, obviously we're going to try to get a po better political ideology. They're, they're centrist. They don't exactly like us. We get a better political ideology, but we're not trying to control them. We're not trying to, we're not trying to control Ukraine. We're not trying to attack them. We tried, we wanted to stop an invasion, even though, the Duma right now is literally being held but held hostage. And once I get my approval up, actually. So I think for right now we're gonna do political spying. And then same thing with South Korea. Dude, what did you do to Bhutan? Can my CO2 per output person went from 1 to 30. Bro, what did you do? I need your save file. Bro is literally like holding Bhutan hostage. I I dead ass like dude, I dead ass need your your save file right now. I'm gonna play. Leave those peaceful Buddhists out of the factories. <laughs> sure. Okay. Enter a sales contract. We're gonna sell him some of that good old fashioned oil. National production. Not really selling that much. We still have enough that we can give to South Korea. I've been playing Bhutan for four months and my CO2 emissions have gone from 1 to 30. A46. 801, 725, 761, we're going to add some natural gas into this. We're only going to do 137, 560, damn it. Okay, we're just going to do oil, we're not going to complicate it. Forty six, eight thirty four, 
796. We're going to go ahead and name the contract, and we're going to call this the Vlad Ivostok Agreement. How do you have a surplus as Bhutan? God and spy. <laughs> I always think that's funny. How'd you do this? I'm just cheating, guys. Bro, I actually got, thought you, like, got, like, cracked out Bhutan. Yeah, it was very easy. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was easy clicking three times and then getting a bunch of surplus instead of having to go through the grueling efforts of... Instead of having going through the grueling efforts of trying to screw your economy or something. Deficit requires attention. Spend thrift policies. Well done. Yeah, we're about to get like a funny amount of growth. Trade union delegates without powers. Revolts against the fine demanded because of a no, an abusive change of statute. I wish I really wish I didn't have to read through, like wait for this to. I don't know. I would. I feel like there's a better way that this can be. This can be done. Uh, received a fine of three point eight million dollars for having to change the address to have the office by authorization. You should review your legislation because it's really too strict, Mr. President. What is my homosexual laws? No union, but legal homosexuality. We could actually go for civil union. Probably see closer relations of Turkey. Why do I have really good relations with Brussels? In Slovakia. The army likes men. I would like to draw your attention to the lack of attention of our armed forces. Okay, we're gonna go for the funny amount. We're gonna go for a straight. Oh, God damn it! What's my max? Oh, I can only double it. Would you like to draw your attention to the lack of men in our armed forces? All right, get ready for the riots. Yes, the pacifists. Pacifists. We're gonna deploy the army very slowly. That way we don't like get a civil war on our hands. Why are their heart reacts? Did anyone just see the heart reacts in my chat? We have subdued the rebel. Bro, no one cares about your self-induced Bataan problem. I always think that's so funny whenever it comes to some Power and Revolution players, though. I'm not specifically calling anyone out, nor... He was. He just had a question about the, the debt-to-GDP ratio. But I think I'll, that's always funny whenever people are, like, cheating the living hell out of their game. And then, like, they come up asking questions like, hey, why does this happen? And I'm like, okay, where was the, what was the previous actions that you did? 
And then he was just like, I cheated. And I was just like, okay. That's probably why. I'm not saying the game is buggy, but then a lot of times that you guys, a lot of times that people, uh, like a lot of times that people run into these issues is whenever they're stretching the game's the limits. Any tips for the roosted episode as the UK? Don't play as the UK. <laughs> Damn it, really? I'm dissolving Parliament in a minute. Once I get like up to a hundred percent approval, I'm dissolving Parliament. Oh, I know how to get approval. We have subdued the rebel movement. There's no more unrest in the city. Order has been restored and our men have returned to the stations. We have subdued the rebel. So now we can just install the revolt and fair and we'll reconsider. Oh, wow, okay. <sighs> so I democratized a little bit and then that stopped the rioting. PG is doing a Gorbachev, but in 2023. Accidents in decline. Let's go. I have a million cops, but only 300,000 doctors. See what that does. I'm really trying to get my approval up, and I'm just trying to think. Wait, what? 
boycotted by the media. Kim Dibzani of Nova Show complained from the League of Social Democrats because of the current legislation controlled political parties. Our party is boycotted by the media. Press releases are never published or only parts of them. We do not get any interview interviews on press, on television, or on radio. Please repeal this law. Okay. 75% approval. I'm going to go ahead and dissolve parliament. Wait. Oh. So I guess I don't need to dissolve parliament because... Oh, I thought... I guess I misread that earlier. It already gave us a majority. So, yeah, so look at that. 17 to 24%. Mostly, be mostly because of the energy that I'm building. Still have a one. We need to. God, I really need to kind of like hold back on the growth right now before, because once the growth kind of starts to increase, then the energy production increases, or en energy consumption increases, and then it kind of like spirals into a situation where I literally cannot keep up with energy demand. Out in and then so now we're gonna do two things one we're gonna focus on Asia right now and so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna come over here we're gonna build a pipeline well we're gonna ask that we build a pipeline we go to North Korea and China And then honestly, just because we're going to try, we're going to ask South Korea as well. God, they really do not want me to increase the wealth tax. They just don't want me to do anything, I guess. South Korea has refused the pipeline, unfortunately. All right, North Korea, you want some of that? All right, we're going to go over here. We're going to go to diplomacy. We are going to go to... We're gonna exchange students. Let's ask them if they want to do that. And then we are also going to do the year of culture. Yep, and I got the achievement counterculture. So this is essentially the achievement in which you do a year of culture dedicated to an enemy country. And they obviously refused the foreign exchange student program. But that did really increase our uh, economic relations. So other ways that we can increase our relations, possibly could we do a free trade agreement? And only happiness on behalf of all our citizens. We, uh, we'd like to extend our warm thanks to organize, organizing a year of culture uh, dedicated to our nation. Government appreciates the honor you have given us, and this will be etched into the history of our two countries forever. As for blending events, you will find that our culture or heritage is quite rich, so you have plenty to choose from. I'll probably get a couple of people saying, No! No, you're 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 infesting us. Like we hate them. Why are you doing this to us? Let's do a year of culture with the United States. Dissolve the parliament. Imagine I'm about to dissolve parliament and I actually lose seats. 
because I've done that before. They really do not want to, <laughs> they really don't want to increase the wealth tax. We're going to try 1.25. This will get us $1.4 billion. We'll just meet with our own party and we'll tell. Which, by the way, I would like to look at government. How corrupt are you? So 68 is the Minister of Finance. Sure. Huh. You're not. Wait, why did I meet up with him? I thought I asked someone else to. I thought I asked someone else to meet up. And parties and dissolve parliament and get seats and then unban. <laughs> The based way of democratizing Russia. At that point, we should just invade Central Asia, reform the southern part of the Soviet Empire. I surprised someone yesterday at my job where I basically he said that he went to the Maldives, and then he said, <clears throat> and then uh. He started to explain where the Maldives were, and I was just like, yeah, they're south of India. And he was just like, yeah, how'd you know that? And I was just like, <laughs> I like geography. Now, yes, when, it, when will I do the Maldives series? We will, we will invade Sri Lanka. those watching right now go ahead and leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new should i join the international speaking of um <laughs> the international criminal court has actually issued a, an arrest warrant for vladimir putin in connection to the forcing of ukrainian children in russian occupied ukraine and he essentially um, they're saying that he is committing war crimes by doing that um, and forcing those kids into Russia. So the ICC has issued an arrest warrant for Vladimir Putin in connection to that. Maximum age for driver's license. I could reduce that to 17. Get it, Lord. Thank you so much for for that donation. Bribe some witches. Does ICC place bounties on its wanted persons? I don't know. And it's funny because whenever I tell they they issued an arrest warrant for someone a couple of days ago. I think it was a uh, no 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 no. They issued arrest warrants for people that uh that connect that were in connection to the. Um, to the children kidnapping plot in eastern Ukraine whenever the war started and essentially they useless arrest were in LMAO yeah I guess it's just a symbolic gesture just be like well why isn't Putin having an arrest warrant and then, and then they issue the arrest warrant and then they're like well that's just useless so it's you know you can't make everyone happy um, but essentially, um, there was a couple of people that were, uh, they had, they had some arrest warrants filed against them by the ICC. And then, so now in extension of those arrest warrants, um, they now are saying that Vladimir Putin has an arrest warrant against him for connection to the plot, 
which also, by the way, the plane, the, the U.S. drone that was taken down over the Black Sea by the Russians, um, that was actually okayed by Russian officials, Russian military officials. And not only that, um, there was actually even a chance that Vladimir Putin even had a hand in the whole thing because um, defense, defense Minister of Russia, uh, Shoigu, I can't remember his first name, um, Shoigu awarded medals to the pilots that took down the drone. So that the fact that they're handing out medals so early, I mean, they, they basically denied the whole thing, by the way. It was so stupid because they were denying it. They were saying, no, that didn't happen. We didn't do that. What are you talking about? You're just trying to lie. And then they release video and then they're like, okay, here's some medals. Uh-oh. Yo, look what I paused on. Look what day I paused on. I just realized this. Guys, look what happens. Look, it's just like Tiananmen Square. It's just like Tiananmen Square. Nothing. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Ooh. Maybe I'm a couple of days off, but. The bill has. You know, I like had a total Alzheimer's moment because I tried to pass that that law. I tried to pass that law. Um to increase the uh, the wealth tax and I totally forgot that that was what I was doing because I got confused why I invited the minister of industry to my office and then I was sitting there and I was like who's I supposed to invite and then I just kind of forgot about it and then as soon as the law got rejected I was like oh that's what I did I cannot believe I forgot that the country's economic activity has completely slowed down you must redeem the situation or be in serious trouble what is it doing? Whoa! Whoa, hang on, what's going on here? Why is... We have some trade contracts going. Why are we slowing? It's not supposed to be happening. Thirty-five. Okay, so we'll sign another contract with the Japanese, and we will sell some high-quality Russian natural gas to them. Because the oil is mostly for, like, South Korea. But we'll, we'll be able to get a good amount of uh, money off the Japanese for some natural gas. Search for the American drone. Like Ukraine invades Russia, yeah. That'd be funny. Instead of, instead of me invading them, <laughs> they invade me and I have to defend myself. <laughs> Don't worry, we have all these troops on the border with them that's still kind of scaring the shit out of them right now, so. Why is there only 3,000, 6,000, 8,000? Why are there so many, uh, like, so many non-troops there? Robert, how are you? Contract rejected? It's too much for Japanese needs. Hmm. Hang on. Japan, you were so picky. I swear to God, I'm going to sell it to the Chinese. I swear to God. Like, if you're going to do this to me... I will literally go to Germany. Intervene in Syria. Technically, are, are, aren't we already intervened there? The ICC does not place bounties on its warrant list. Man, I was hoping to become a millionaire by dragging Putin from Moscow to Holland. Mm. Yeah, you're going to drag Putin from Moscow all the way through either Ukraine or Belarus. And then, I mean, I mean, by the time you... Yeah, I mean, you could go the long way and go go in through Latvia, and then he'd probably get like mauled on the way on the way through Europe. Take him to like in the center of Kiev, and then see what funnies the citizens do there. I'm getting like put on a Russian watch list, then I'm gonna get like dragged into a Russian jail, like in my sleep.
I like how... What's going on with the growth? What the, what, what, what the growth doing? What the growth doing? Send some troops in border and then back off. I don't wanna... I don't wanna threaten them. Um, maybe I'll threaten Estonia, but... Yeah, I mean, actually, Georgia's... Georgia's looking a little tasteful right now. Actually, no, Azerbaijan. Because they have oil. They have a connection to Iran. What about the entire Caucasus region? Uh-oh. Ukraine, what did you do? So it is a hostage situation and an assassination literally simultaneously. You know how many missiles and drones you would hit if you you would be hit by if you drag Putin? Wait, I have a pipeline to Italy. I mean, they actually have pretty modest relations with me. The Mall Europe, 22 billion. Yeah, let's sell. Let's use the LNG train. So if I use the pipeline, I can only get... Let's look. 71 billion, but I could get like 100 billion if I just use a train. Oh no, I can only get 18. Oh yeah, no, we're using a train. Five seventy-eight. These important troops are positioned near Rob. Hmm. Hmm? Hmm? Hang on. Hold on, Ukraine. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. All right, Ukraine, you kind of forced my hand here. I'm going to get lit up by a bunch of NAFO people. Mm -mm. Faced with this threat, mm -mm. I can't. Oh, 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 oh. You escape, Raggy. I really think we should. Ukraine. Just <laughs> way too, way too much to sell for Italian needs. All right, I'll just invite Italy over for a meeting. The Italia. We're gonna invite Italia over. President of the Council. What is he like? The Jedi. Temple Council or something like. I just gained ten percent approval for capturing my own friend. Huh. Oil. Yeah. So I don't have any pipelines. Do <laughs> you remember my CO2 growing from 1 to 30? Now it's negative 226. <laughs> eh, come on, man. 
Okay, so let me look. Natural gas. One twenty three will do one oh three. Oh, my God, Europe and Asia are like making me like end my life up. Fine, I'm just I'm going to, to the Chinese. Japan wants to be sticky, and then <sighs> like. Japan wants to be sticky and just buddy Asia just, or Europe just hate just doesn't like me right now obvious for probable probable obvious reasons um so we're just gonna we're just gonna go to the Chinese Ooh, great disapproval Ooh, what are you gonna do can't really do anything against you know, can't really do anything against me, can you? And you had the troops there first, so unless you want a special military operation in the Donbass, like solve your problem for with what with what sir 609 670 we're gonna call this the peking agreement sell them less of it you see the supply and demand they will only buy as much as they need just cheat lol no Gas. Yeah, hold off on that for right now. We'll see what the two hundred billion dollar contract does. Don't forget tariffs against who though? Who am I tariffing? India? Oh, ouch! I'm a f yeah, I'm fucking stupid. Look at that. Oh, wow. 31. Let's go, dude. I think we can actually upgrade our... Uh, we can actually get a free trade agreement with them. Let's do Global Econ. paying them to buy stuff from you you're essentially um essentially what a negative tariff means is that you are you're reducing the trade barrier so if you look at the free trade agreement and i need to rewatch and maybe even redo my free trading agreement free trade agreement tutorial because essentially i don't know if i got it wrong because i made that thing in such a haste so let me go so say I want a free trade agreement with Australia. I'm just gonna do that for example. So you see every single one of these has this. This is the biggest thing about free trade agreements that that is the most important aspect of this agreement. It reduces your tra tariffs 50% on average. That is what you're doing whenever it comes to these sectors. Whenever you come over here, and you go to custom duties and you start reducing it to a negative change essentially what you're doing is that you're reducing the trade barrier to that product 
So what you can do is that you can do that to the entire to the entire economy, and then you can look, you can uh, have that country start trading with you more of that product because you're making it less restrictive to trade with them. So if you want to, if you have really bad relations with the country and you want them to like you economically so you can get those free trade agreements, essentially what you can do is that you can ask that they, you can uh, reduce trade barriers and that will make them more custom to like you economically. So actually let's check my economic relations map. And Japan actually does like me economically. But yes, the other thing that it does do is that it increases imports because then you are importing more from that country. And of course it failed. Your areas that are devoted to organic farming is too small. Oh yeah, I haven't even done anything to organic farming. Oh my god, oh my god, Kirkland! What's up, Kirkland? The communist, the 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 the, the Discord communist is back. How are you? I had so many debates with this guy. I don't know if he hates me or not. No hard feelings. It's my boy, it's my boy Kirkland. You can get a good economic relationship by giving aid, but yeah, I'm talking about, I can give anyone aid, but I mean, I can't give Japan aid. I'm trying to, what, they hate me. No! Okay, let's reduce tariffs with South Korea as well. Oh, I have an excess now. And then lastly, I need to reduce tariffs to them energy-wise. So we're gonna reduce tariffs energy for South Korea and Japan by 25%. So they can get energy a little bit cheaper from us. That way they like us more economically. <laughs> Hard to improve relationships with developed countries. Usually, I wait to help with disasters, but the United States and Japan are uniquely difficult to increase relations with. Yeah. These are some of the best markets to deal with, but yeah, they are very uniquely difficult to, to try to. Can't you just give aid to the. Yes, I can. My god, you're a genius. Hi, Japan. I just gave you $200 million. Hi, Japan. Would you like to sign a free trade agreement with me? Ow. PG, please let go of my 49 children. I can't pay you $82 trillion worth of trinkies. not wait 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 hang on i need to ask south korea south korea down negative 20 u.s needs like one to ten billion before they give a shit <laughs> Out of 
of state, nomination of the head of state, universal suffrage, change the system, two turns, change the term limits, if my country has a negative. We have a lot of questions. Stop cheating. We don't we don't like cheaters in this chat. Should I reduce the term limit? Wait, so that means, oh yeah, it's in 2024. Am I denazifying Ukraine yet? Um, they actually have some troops on the border because they put troops on the border, but they actually withdrew, the, withdrew those troops. So we'll go ahead and have them return to base. We got very close to denazifying Ukraine at that point, but. An armed group devastated our headquarters in Tambov, stealing all valuable equipment before setting the premises on fire. My God. Firemen succeeded in containing the fire after three hours of continuous battle, but the place was completely destroyed. And they're just doing our work for us. I just finished The Last of Us. Very, very good show. What'd you guys think of it if you watched it? Damn it! Japan, just accept my treaties! Just, 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 why? No! No! Alright, so national anthem wise, should I change back to the one we had in the 90s? Soon, of law controlling the political parties, we have eliminated all of their advantages. There will be no more postage paid or facilitated broadcasting in the media, no more free supplies, and no more free disposal of offices. Several parties are furious about this, Mr. President, a particular one, the one of Galena. I don't know how to say that last name. You should increase your relations with India. Maybe the second best market in the game after the United States. It'd be, a, it'd be an okay idea, yeah. I've been streaming for an hour and 20 right now. I'll probably end between an um, hour and a half to two hours. Hungry, having eight. I woke up super early and I was just like, yeah. Uh oh. Mr. Lee Din Ping, Winnie the Pooh, wants to meet with us. What are my relations with India? Wow, I actually have pretty good relations with them. Um, we will ask for a free trade agreement then.
Uberization of society. Do, 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 do. Taxation. Oh, they actually support that now. Okay, so we're going to start getting the wealth tax up. Oh, that's why they didn't want it, because they didn't like me. I forgot. I haven't played this game in nearly a month. Um, and my man, she, my man, my boy, my boy, my boy, Xi Jinping. Do not have any news yet on the, uh, ooh, should we go after good relations with the Taliban? Let's start, let's start giving him some weapons. I swear to God, if people keep refusing, why does no one want to do business with me? Fence. Make some contracts with the United States. Like what? <laughs> it's funny how my general calls Lee Dinping a coward for being in his NBC bunker instead of bleeding to death out of and put out of, instead of bleeding to death out of his eyes during a chemical attack on Beijing. Jesus Christ. Good morning. I didn't come in with the hand. In fact, I wanted to hand you this economic contract of sugar. Of course, like what? Like I don't get that. I never get that. Huh? Huh? That's okay. not to be turned down. Thank you. He was always the best things, best one to sell things to. Always. Economic seventy-four. All right, let's go for a small. Since no one wants to be my friend right now, let's go for a small free trade agreement with China. Just because they're like extremely overpowered. We're just gonna reduce uh, tra uh, trade restrictions by 50%. That'll actually give us a really, really good boost of bro growth. Our country is confined. And then since I have the popularity now, I should actually be able to start increasing the taxes once that growth starts to hit. Then I'll be able to increase the taxes that will slow that economic growth down. Which actually we need to start getting the seeds going for that. Just like the industrial pollution tax. And of course they don't want to pass it. <clears throat> oh my god, Tear in chats? Yo, Tear, how are you been, my boy? How's that, how's that funny? How's that funny been? That funny, funny game game you've been in that you were barely in, actually. I like, oh my god, look at that. I'm just so indebted to the United States now. Now I really can't go to war with the United States because now they're just going to cut me off. The United States is financing the Russian economy. Finland. Finland wants to meet. Heista Victo. Don't look up what that says. What that meant. Shh. 
should invade Mongolia. Uh, yes, the lands of Genghis Khan and there's a nuclear accident in North Korea. <laughs> Of course there is. Of course. What'd you do, North Korea? What'd you do? Did you do a funny... Did you do a funny funny... You little stupid boy... You little idiot boy... They had an oopsie. They had an oopsie. Environmental issues. And growth at 6.42%. Can press the wrong nuclear button when it nukes his own country. Deficit and percentage of GDP. East Timor, 44%. What is the United States doing? Bro, 12.7%. Why are you hostile with Iran? I haven't done anything with Iran. That's how the game starts out. For some reason, Everson thinks that Russia and Iran hate each, hate Good morning. each other. Utility vehicle construction. They want to sell any utility vehicles. National production. Oh, this is actually a beneficial contract. It's actually... Look. It's actually a rare a, a rarity in this game to actually get proposed uh, beneficial contracts. So we're actually going to consider this. Okay, so annual quality, they want to sell me. They want to sell um, utility vehicles to me. They're one star quality, unfortunately. Of course. So they're selling it. So their average sale price is 122,000. They want to sell it to me for 134,000. My purchase price is 137,000. So we're going to reduce this to 127,000. How much do they have? 35,000. So <laughs> sure. Sure. We're going to say that this works. That this won't absolutely screw over Finland. Um, we'll send this over. Really? I wanted the utility vehicles! Good morning! I didn't... Kazakhstan, oh, even more utility vehicles. They want to purchase utility vehicles from me. I'll, I'll, I'll accept this actually we will we will actually sell uh, do this because I feel it because sometimes I think it's whenever it pertains to, like vehicles or something like that it actually does kind of incentivize them to produce more because now you're having to make up not only for um, you're not only having to make up for the <coughs> uh, shortfall in your contract but then you're also having to um, it gives them an incentive to make more because they're actually making profit off of them. 140,000. Sale price 140,000, 146,000, 14 billion dollars I'm making off the contract. Okay. I'm gonna see what the rating for that is. If it's a really bad contract, I will I will cancel it immediately. You should do a little funny. You should do a little World War Three. Oh my god, look at that. $1.2 trillion off of that China contract. Economy. Um, Kazakhstan. You actually have a good contract. Okay, so we'll let us sell at a much better price than usual, and we will guarantee the sale of a large portion of our production. Um, the revenue in this contract is insignificant compared to our global economic activity, and it is particularly profitable, and selling more of it will be, bring more profits. 
And so uh, the contract will only create a few jobs. So we will go and see what that does to the utility vehicle. It's not energy. Surplus, yes. Getting that surplus now. We have another one that's gonna be completed soon too. <clears throat> so trade balance, manpower 296. I want to get to like a 2% budget surplus and then we're going to start putting subsidies into the economy. The bill has it's actually a chance on my wait until 2024 to do subsidies. I... US buys everything so expensive you need to sell them. <laughs> he's, he's like screaming at me, sell to the US, sell to the US. Should I invite him for a meeting though? When I get like a lot of, yeah, that'll probably be a little bit faster. Faster. Kind of unrealistic because I don't think the United States would want to do this, and I think like all of Europe would be pissed off at this. But this isn't calculated in this scenario, so we're just gonna ignore all of that, and we are going to invite him over for a meeting. Maybe we'll discuss the relinquishing of control over Crimea. Maybe be make maybe be become an independent state. At the moment. Uh, speaking of Mongolia, <clears throat> do you need to make any special military operation? Yeah, probably against Azerbaijan. No. Well, really. Try that with some. This game is way more chill than IRL politics, yeah. Alright, so automobiles. Building housing and roadway. Some of that fish, the foosh. Iron. I have now gone through three practice total wars and I can do it without nuking. It's time to reestablish the unequal treaties. <laughs> it is until you read the daily newspapers. Oh yeah, actually. It's pretty chill. It's more chill than IRL politics. Yeah, if you read the newspapers, it's actually kind of not chill. Like they, they do some wacky, funny shit in the, in the newspapers. Do subsidies to lower the price of a product make do subsidies to lower the price of a product make the sales price and the market go down? Um I'd actually have to look. Does anyone else know that answer? Yeah, that's what I thought. Subsidies usually don't lower prices in the game. Not that I've seen. Not noticeably, like I would have to test that out, but I'm pretty sure, yeah. Because the way subsidies work essentially is that with a you're essentially incentivizing that sector to produce more, so it adds more to the employment. They're able to hire more workers, and then in turn they are able, they are able to produce more. Um, before 2022 is actually where you give them subsidies, and it was like an automatic increase to the production of that sector. And then in the last, and then in the latest edition, in the 2022 edition, um, it actually works now to where, um, it actually works now to where, um, essentially, uh, it, it, it increases the production over time. So it's not like an automatic increase, which I honestly think is a little bit better because it makes it more realistic.
<clears throat> okay, what else? I don't want to overstimulate the economy. Oh my god, look at that. The United States has zero naval production. <laughs> and I have a one. I think that's where we're going to increase production on. I really need to find more. A different. Um, no copyright music. Software industry. Yeah, let's give them some software. Oh, this is good. Okay, let's give them some tires. Yeah. Um, you can also directly lower the cost of things. Yeah, so basically you can go into... Uh, let me finish this contract and I'll essentially explain it. But if you have watched the economic tutorial, I'll, it basically explains what it does. So there's a option in every sector where you can directly reduce the price of that product. Essentially what that does is that you're reducing that product's price to whatever you think is necessary. And you can also reduce it. So if you want to say, I want to reduce the cost of fuel by 5%. You go in, reduce the cost of fuel by 5%, and essentially what you are doing is that you are subsidizing that sector. So because they're going to be losing profits off of that sector and you don't want the sector to fail, you were basically coming in with a stash of cash and you were saying, reduce the price of this product and we will pay you for reducing the price of that product. So you keep it, keep the price of that product down so that way your people's uh, per capita income can actually go up and then it kind of it helps your people it's more of a popular move that you can do to try to help your people out in a stringy economic situation but it's extremely expensive in some cases because you are essentially subsidizing the reduction of price in that product because you need to make sure that those companies aren't going to fail because you're reducing the price mandatorily on them and then we're going to add one more product that we are going into this um, contract and let's send this over so steel 1200 we're gonna go for 1400 uh, tire industry 141 164 we're gonna go for 180 sale of wood we have 92 165 we're gonna go for 137 everything has been accepted this contract will expire in the year 2028 very good so then we are on tuesday we're going to wait for the next monday to see how much exactly that contract was worth i'll show you exact guys exactly instead of having to do a calculator um for that um instead of having to do a calculator um this is actually the easiest way to calculate your contracts um in in power and revolution So yeah, so for example, if I wanted to come over here to energy, I want to go to electricity and I want to reduce the price of electricity. So you will go over here and the sales price of uh, electricity is 147. So I go over here and I'm like, okay, well, I want to help people afford electricity a little bit more. And actually this is based off of the price. So no, 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 okay. So this is off of the price of this product tax included, which is 137.37. So I go over here and it says if the state decides to lower prices to promote purchasing power, a home may have to defray this reduction in order to not penalize the producing companies in the relevant sector. So I can say, okay, so I want to reduce the price to 150 exactly. So that is a exact 15.4% uh, reduction to the price of that product. So then it tells me the budget cost of this of this uh, decrease in the price. So essentially what that is doing is, again, I am subsidizing $7.38 billion into that sector. I am essentially injecting money into that sector in order to tell them to reduce the price of this product. Or, you know, if you wanted to be a little more technical and say, like, you know, I just want to do this. If I want to reduce the price by 5%, that'll be $2.3 billion, and that'll reduce the price from 177 to 
Why does the opium industry exist as a viewable entity if we can't use it? I was so disappointed when I found out I couldn't sell opium to China. <laughs> opium War 3, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's all we're gonna be doing lads they make they make it they allow us to make opium legal like i i swear to god i'm selling the first thing i'm doing is selling it to china i love explaining the game mechanics of this game i really want 2023 to come out so i can <clears throat> make more tutorials on this game Make specific tutorials. What would you like to see? Beside, you know, the genocide tutorial that everyone keeps <laughs> telling me to make. Alright, what's up guys? Politics Gaming here, and today we're going to be doing a replication of what happened in the 90s. So you guys are ready, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, and we're going to go ahead and invade Bosnia and Herzegovina and reestablish the Republika Srpska. Again, leave a like. We're gonna go ahead and send troops into Sarajevo. Okay, so we have some subsidies. We're gonna go over to uh, water supply networks, and we will do one hundred million dollars. Oh, it's a national sector. When you do the war tutorial once, it's you and Crab for economics and you and me for war. Ooh, maybe. People have lots of... Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking is... <clears throat> so what I can actually do, and I was thinking about doing this in YouTube shorts, but I don't know if you guys would want to see that. Essentially, like, it could be like these, like minute tutorials where like I basically say like like I explain something something like this so I say what is inflation what is the key interest rate what is the exchange rate what is the um what is the deficit what is the structural surplus what is the debt servicing what is the public debt what is the public debt um what are these figures and what do they mean? And I could literally fit that into like a minute long tutorial, like in YouTube shorts or something like that. Or if you wanted to have like a video or something like that, I don't know if you want, want that in a video or if you would want that in YouTube shorts, I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe Kirkland can kind of help me out. Do a commando meta tutorial if you know. If you know, you know. What do you mean? Price reduction will be very important in the 2023 edition. Do you have a tax tutorial? I do not. It's... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do a tax tutorial. I'll make a channel in the Discord and then you guys can suggest tutorials to me. And then what I, what can happen is then I can start drawing off of that. Maybe I'll like get a jar or something like that. And then I'll reach into that jar and I'll just pull out a random uh, uh, thing. I'll pull out a random one and uh, 
and I'll just start making tutorials off of that. But the tax tutorial, the thing that makes me afraid about making a tutorial right this second is that the 2023 edition is about to come out. The last time that I made a tutorial was the economic tutorial 3.0. And whenever I made that, they made I, <laughs> I was with the 2020 edition, they made the 2021 edition, and then you know what they did? They revitalized the entire debt screen, and I didn't get any of that in Economic Tutorial 3.0. So what I'm afraid of is that if I were to make a tutorial right this second, because I really want to, but I don't want to because I don't want them to change something really significantly, and then it just throws the entire tutorial out of, out of focus, because then it's irrelevant, and it doesn't make any sense because it doesn't include what the new features are. So I, if you guys don't mind, I would like to wait until the 2023 edition to make these next tutorials. And I know that's really frustrating and it's frustrating to me. I really don't want to make a tutorial right now that might just be irrelevant in a couple of months. So yeah, 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 yeah. So taxes should, so what would you guys, there's like 15 people here and I'll do a bigger poll. Um, <clears throat> I'll do a bigger poll. Let me do this. I just asked you guys a poll so you guys can go ahead and start taking that poll. Only got a couple more days for this uh, power plant right here. Wow, really? Everyone really wants a tax tutorial. Damn, no one's voting for that damn elections tutorial. No matter how taxes and the economy works in the game, it will, it will work a little certain predictable way, IRL. Yeah, and then I, maybe I could talk about like how the games, everyone like says like, well, the taxes are biased in the game. Like it's all left-wing bias. And actually I don't, and I think, and me and Kirkland actually agreed on this. I don't think that the economy in this game is biased. There's certain social and human rights policies that are biased, but I don't specifically think that the, ele that the economy is biased because like, I mean, we saw this in real life. Like, so you reduce the company tax. So for example, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act of 2017, President Trump came in, he came in and he said, okay, we're gonna do a tax reform. He reduces taxes, does all of this. It expands the deficit. What, we had like a 600, 500, $600 billion deficit whenever Obama left office. By the time the COVID pandemic hit, and, that, and I'm not saying by the time he left office, because a lot of the deficit spending that he had to do was related to the pandemic. So by the time the pandemic hit, the deficit was just over a trillion dollars. It was like 1.1, maybe $1 trillion, maybe 1.2, less than 1.2, I think it was. <clears throat> and... That was mainly because, you know, he was reducing taxes, he reduced taxes on the rich, he reduced taxes on the middle class, he reduced taxes on the poor, he reduced taxes on the companies. So he reduced the company tax, I think, from like 28% to 21%. So there was a lot of... <clears throat> oh, look at that structural surplus. Let's go. Um... So there was a lot of uh, 
and then you do the same thing in this game and that's what exactly what's going to happen you have a debit you have a surplus you reduce the company tax you reduce a lot of these taxes with a major tax reform conservative tax reform and then it's going to expand the deficit it's cause and effect and i mean i'm right wing and i have to admit right wing tax policies do and do end up in the end increasing the deficit yeah maybe they'll lead to some economic growth because that's what we saw under trump but then at the same time it still expands the deficit and you can't exactly especially as the united states you can't use growth specifically and solely to increase um you can't use growth to decrease the eff- the deficit you have to do spending policies you have to increase taxes you have to do a lot of these things so yeah lower taxes is beneficial for the people but for the national economy itself it doesn't exactly work out the way you want it to so there's it's a double-edged sword whenever it comes to that At nearly one point. So let's give him two. I don't think it's biased in the way people think. I think uh, the after effects are a bit biased. Like no one's going to riot on the streets over a 0.5% reduction in the corporate tax. Exactly. So I think, and, and that's why I say the social policies, the social effects of some policies, the social, the society in general, <clears throat> the society in general in this game, yes, that is left-wing biased. I will say that. I will admit that. The economy is very far from. And see, even Kirkland, the communist, agrees with me. Kirkland, are you seriously a communist? Like, am I? Am, is that okay for me to be calling you? Like, I don't. I'm. I, I thought you said you were a communist, so that's why I like. It's like a like. Wow, the right wing and the communists kind of agree with each other. That's why I said that out loud. So, if you don't want me to say that, you know, jokingly in a couple of ways, just let me know. <clears throat> that was very well put, though. LOL. That was a hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, when it comes to the economy, you know, a couple of years ago, I was sitting here like, oh, yeah, let's go. Like, tax re- cut and reductions at. And then by, like, 2019, I was sitting there watching it, and I was just like, <laughs> it's shit. Because <laughs> um, that's whenever reality hit. The American elections in this game make no sense either. It's so easy to landslide, yeah. <laughs> it is really easy to landslide in an American election. Like, American elections are, like, the worst thing about power and revolution. Like, everything else, yeah, you can have some nail-biter elections in this game. The United States is, like, the easiest place to have suppression of our credits. Trade unions are probably a little... For business, including business development in their activities. And this way, all union delegates' hours credits are eliminated. These credits are no longer paid in the meetings and prove the fact that this represents a lack of profit for the business and therefore for all the employees. No amount of tax will subdue the deficit. But then no... See, see that's the thing. No amount of growth will subdue the deficit. It's a combined effort. You have to instill growth... And then also have some sort of way that you can get that revenue. So if you're focusing on trying to solely get growth, the United States would need like 20% growth to get to lower its deficit a significant amount. So when it comes to taxes, I'm somewhat of a neoliberal when it comes to that. It's multi-approach. I agree. I will agree with you on that. It is very much multi-approach. Because you can't reduce taxes and then not expect the deficit to increase. You have to account for that money elsewhere. So maybe that's why he was increasing taxes on things like the EU, on China, everything like that. Because the deficit was increasing after he did that uh, tax reform. And then he was trying to get the money elsewhere didn't work out the way he wanted it to because then china started to go to all these other countries they formed the rcep and honestly and i'll actually say this now the leaving the tpp which actually we should actually start thinking about doing an economic union if 
I can look. Eh. Create a new organization. Economic market, monetary union producing countries and political military organization. The problem is disjointed spending arbitrary and government actions, the byproduct of lobbyists and foreign interests. Yeah. If I were to do a free trade area, what would I do? That would be really funny if I could get a free trade area with a, um, with a lot of Eastern European countries. Maybe one with um, the Middle East? As an international, Donald Trump was probably one of your best presidents you had in a long time. America actually felt powerful. <sighs> I won't say. I don't know. I'm still. I th I'm still waiting to see the actual after effects of the Trump presidency. I still think it's way too early to be making analysis on it, on like the actual effects of how he made America look, how he made America feel, everything like that. Everyone. He's still a very divisive figure, especially with the after effects that we're dealing with of the Doha agreement, of Afghanistan, of everything like that. Taxing wealth is the key to economic success. At the same time, you cannot get all of your money on that because then you institute capital flight. Capital flight is not instituted in this game, so that's why I, I play like a freaking communist in this game sometimes. <clears throat> Like, that doesn't exactly, because then they can just leave. Taxing wealth, if you tax them too much, then they're, they're just going to leave. They're just going to haul ass and just, just, <laughs> just move somewhere else. Kim Jong-un put, put America back on top. I don't know, buddy, because they're still doing some funny stuff. They're still launching ballistic missiles across Japan. Capital flight is 100% not in this game. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. That's why I like. I have like 10% wealth taxes because I don't have to worry about. <laughs> there was one time. There was one time. I can't remember who it was. I can't remember if it, remember if it was Crab or if it was someone else. And I swear to God. I was sitting there, he was asking me about economic strategy, and so I was like, uh, I was like, do, I was doing some economic, I was doing some economic strategy, and then so I started to increase the wealth tax to like 5%, and he started yelling at me over the, over the Discord call, and he's like, what are you doing? You're gonna institute capital flight, and I'm just like, bro, that doesn't exist in this game, it's fine. And he's sitting there, and he's just like, no, no, no. And so he had to like, had me like go through this this extremely complicated like economic strategy that I can't even remember right now, but it was a pretty interesting strategy. So if I can I can't remember who it was. So if you're listening to me and you're mad that I'm kind of making fun of that, then don't worry, I'm not doing it out of spite. But he was sitting there. Yelling, I, I just thought it was hilarious that he was like screaming at me over the over the Discord call, like no, no, capital flight, capital flight. And I was just like, bro, calm down. I'm sitting there on the other side. I'm just like, bro, like, it's fine. <laughs> that, does, that shit doesn't exist. I swear to God, if uh, the, the gas prices are managed by the, by the president. The gas prices were cheap under this president. Now they're going up under this president because four years is a very long time and apparently doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weeding out the corruption. I get it. Now let's find him and give him the post again. Oh, we got a Bolivian in chat. How are you?
Okay, we're gonna pause this and we're gonna start handing out some subsidies. That's a, that's what else we need in this game. <clears throat> Sorry if I like I was really quiet and then I just immediately started talking. Probably scared the shit out of some of y'all. That's what else we need in this game. We need strategic reserves. I want to make strategic reserves of oil, of oxides, of silver, of gold, of everything like that. I want reserves. I that that that's ex that's essentially that's like going to be the best feature. Honestly, in a couple of years, is like if they give us like strategic reserves, I'm gonna, I'm a shit. Guys, email them. Don't harass them, but email them. Tell them that you want strategic reserves. <laughs> just, just swamp them. <laughs> okay, don't harass them. Don't harass them. I'm, I swear to God, I'm, e I'm emailing that shit right now. I'll say you told me to say it. No, 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 no. All right, I retract my statement. Please do not do that. But if you guys think that's a good idea, then you can suggest it to him. I think I just made a horrible decision as a content creator to tell y'all to email someone. <laughs> Because, uh, like, Supreme Ruler, for example, has a lot of, like, str strategic reserves that, you, like, you can build reserves of a certain product, like oil, natural gas, everything like that, and it lasts you a long time. So, basically, like, you could have it, you could go to war, and then whenever the world economy cuts you off from something, then you could say, okay, well, I have these reserves, they last me about a year, and that's the way I can go off of those reserves. sent that yes brigade everson yes <laughs> brigade everson pg told us to <laughs> currency mechanics are pretty complex actually there are limits to how many covid supplies there are so stockpiles do exist and shortages exist these are hidden as statistics as these are hidden in statistics as far as i can tell Republicans, hang on, there's a news 
Russian energy firm helping China's nuclear weapons program. Whoa. House Republicans are calling on Biden administration's national security officials to utilize the full application of sanctions, export controls, and diplomacy to block a Russian state-owned energy company from helping China to expand its nuclear weapons program and warn that its relationship is a direct threat to U.S. national security. House Armed, For Armed Services Committee Chairman Mike Rogers, House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Turner, and Mike House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman uh, Michael DeCall, McCall are demanding that the Biden administration acknowledge that Russia and China are working in tandem against the United States and that Russia's state-owned nuclear energy corporation Rostatom is helping the People's Republic of China acquire enough weapons-grade plutonium to fuel its strategic nuclear breakout. The colony administration to view this corporate cooperation for what it is. It is a direct threat to U.S. security and more, us, more evidence that U.S. that Russia and China are working in tandem against the United States. The administration uses all tools at its disposal to stop Roster Tom and the PRC's dangerous cooperation. The longer we wait to act, the more difficult it will be to address Roster Tom's nefarious and malign dealings. Short every dollar and euro that the Rosta, Ros, Rosatom brings in directly finances the death and destruction we see in Ukraine, China's nuclear weapons expansion, and is a direct threat to American way of life. Interesting. So apparently, a Russian nuclear energy nuclear energy uh, company is now financing and helping and selling pro uh, plutonium to the Chinese nuclear weapons program. Fun times we're living in, guys. Fun times. I'll see you guys whenever I get drafted. <laughs> oh, shit. I've been, <laughs> I've been streaming for two hours. need my PG. <laughs> yeah, but I'm hungry. All right, I'll go for another 15 minutes. How about that? We'll meet in the middle. Until two o'clock my time. Oh, hang on, I need to do this. Retirement pension. Capitalization here. Oh, oh my god, this entire time I haven't touched anything related to the conspiracy theories.
Here is our growth. Ah, yes, the great people of Juneau, Alaska are now rioting. Twenty-two. I have thirty-three billion dollars. We should I use it on current rate? Who do I pay the most in interest? The United States. Okay, so I'll. I just got Treasury Reserve, so I'd be waiting until October. I'll go ahead and buy back the loan now and reduce my interest rate. So now I am at 20 billion. So we'll just start paying the United States, kind of get that interest rate down. And actually, we will go back. We will ask them. That is a very high interest rate that I really do not want to be paying. So we will meet with them on the 15th. Bro, what? We're gonna do 12.5. Accept it, please. Very well. <gasps> we accept your offer. When our interest is really high because we have a 14%. Um, okay, so we will meet with Germany and the United Kingdom on reducing our interest rates. On the 18th. My counter proposal. Very well, we accept your offer. Very kind. No thanks. Why is the United States what? Why are we still at 14.45% with the United States? I reduced that to 12.5.
the other thing that I kind of want to see in this, by the way, would be... It, it like so lottery and bets is legal in a lot of different countries so it's it's in the united states it's kind of like i don't know how it's looked at in like i think it's yeah, i know it's legal in japan i know it's legal in the west a lot of western countries sort of but in the united states it's very specific it's very specific there's um like federally it is illegal to gamble <clears throat> but you can step onto a Indian reservation on a Native American reservation and then you can you can gamble as much as you want casinos everything like that and technically we have like some weird legal gambling where like sports betting is okay but then you know like go into a casino and throwing some throwing twenty dollars into a slot machine is illegal so it's kind of weird but there should be possibly be a way for me to kind of like legalize or illegalize like lottery and bets for example that would be pretty cool and us is state to state let me look real quick because i thought it was federally illegal in like no state Gambling is subject to a variety of legal restrictions. In 2008, gambling activities generated gross revenues of $92 billion. Game American Gaming Association, an industry trade group, states that gaming in the United States is a $240 billion industry, employing 1.7 million people in 40 states. In 2016, gambling taxes contributed to 8.85% in state and local tax revenues. Predicts of gambling, blah, 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 legality. Well, gambling is legal under U.S. federal law. Okay, okay. So it's legal under U.S. federal law, but there are significant restrictions in pertaining to interstate and online gambling, and that each state is free to regulate or prohibit the practice within its borders. Okay, so that's why it's legal. No, it's not federal. I'm, I'm stupid. It's not federally illegal, because if it was federally illegal, then the Indian reservations wouldn't be able to do it. Because they're constrained by federal law, not state law. Are Indian res reservations restrained by federal law, though? Yeah, essentially. They're restrained by federal law, essentially, if a certain uh, reservation does something. It's kind of like Washington, D.C. So Washington, D.C. can make any law that it wants, but if they, but if Congress does not like it, then that, fe then that law can be overturned by the federal government. They actually, the uh, Congress actually just did this um, not too long ago. Um, I think it was like a week or two ago where they actually overturned a law. Um, it was a crime bill. It was a DC crime bill. And they actually, um, in, at least in Canada, it works funny. How does it work? Um, so then whenever it comes to Indian reservations, they have a very special status in the United States, but at the same time, it doesn't exactly, um, like they're still, they're constrained by federal law, but they still have very much a large amount of autonomy. We just killed three people with tear gas. 
Oh my god, what is wrong with the police as of recently? We have subdued the rep. It's not federal land, is it? It's native land. It's native land, but it's still federal land. <laughs> A federal Indian reservation is an area of land reserved for tribe or tribes under the treaty and other agreement the United States executive order or federal statute or administrative action as a permanent tribal homelands, but a federal government holds title to the land in trust on behalf of the tribe. So it's federal land, but it's not federal land. It's legal mumbo jumbo that gets really confusing the more you look into it, but it's also really interesting. So it's federal land, but it's tribal land, but it's still federal land. Because it's protected by the federal government, but it belongs to the tribe. There are three types of reserved federal lands, military, public, and Indian. Federal land, Indian reservation, blah, 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 blah. The largest is a 16 million acre Navajo Nation reserve reservation located in Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah. The smallest is the 1.32 acre parcel in California where the Pitt River Tribe Cemetery is located. Yeah, basically some mumbo jumbo. It works similarly in Canada, but I think both Canada and the United States both recognize it as sovereign, but it's complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it, it, they're sovereign. They're sovereign nations that have the utmost power to really do whatever they want. They still receive federal dollars. They're on federal land. So it's kind of like a national park, but it's being administered by someone else. It's not being administered by the U.S. federal government. It's being administered by the tribe. So it's still treated like federal land but it's not being administered by c uh, Congress in most cases. Because if Congress had to get involved, then yes, they have the utmost authority to do what they want. I like how I'm talking about American nation, national, na Native American tribes while I'm playing as Russia. Some people are watching and are just like, shut the fuck up and get back to the game. Well, unfortunately, I'm going to have to end the stream because I've been streaming for two hours, two and a half hours, and I'm hungry. <laughs> so um, I, lo I, lo I love these streams. I really need to start streaming more. Um, and then I'm definitely going to start uh, thinking about getting to the uh, tax tutorial. So I wanted to do the energy tutorial, but I think the tax tutorial would be a lot more interesting. Um, there is a special military operation about to take place in Uzbekistan. We will go ahead and uh, send troops into Karkal, Pakistan, since that's a funny area for Uzbekistan. Um, anyway, guys, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you guys want to see more content like this, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss anything whenever I do make it. I will be looking at these tutorials and I will start making scripts and lists for what tutorials I will start making, especially once the 2023 edition is out. And uh, if I do have any more news on the uh, the 2022 edition. I will let you guys know, of course, and I will see you guys in the next video. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you guys so much for interacting on the stream. 200 views. That's nice. Go ahead and leave a like again, subscribe if you are new, 
See you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care.